This is the most stunning take on the Mercedes After Dark driving experience that I've ever come across in terms of the headlights, in terms of the styling of the cabin, and maybe especially in terms of the way that this optional nearly $10,000 hyperscreen display comes to life and ties all of that together when the sun goes down. Starting the first few hours of your day in the dark with this lighting system has a way of giving your eyes a jump start on the day ahead. This is the Mercedes EQE 500 SUV, and it's an all-electric Benz with 402 horsepower, 633 pounds of torque, a starting price of 104,000 Canadian dollars, and it's built in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. This is a rolling technological gene pool full of the very latest Mercedes innovations cooked up for a customer base who always wants to try the best new thing. But what I want to focus on in this video is a pretty singular aspect of driving this machine, and that aspect is the nighttime drive. I've been reporting on headlight performance from the heart of Northern Ontario's moose country for years, and in the past few of those I've come away from numerous assignments on different Mercedes models, having been consistently impressed with the night drive experience delivered across the brand. Specifically, across a wide range of price points and vehicles from Mercedes, I've come to expect excellent lighting system performance with some cutting-edge high-tech built in, and a beautiful after-dark experience from the cabin to enjoy that from. So from the mid-40 grand mark in the A220 sedan a few years back, to the CLA Coupe, to the E63 Psycho Wagon, and the latest all-electric stuff I've been testing, it's a consistently impressive after-dark driving experience regardless of the price point. And in the new EQE, with its miles of glossy screens and ambient lighting, it's a good reminder of why some shoppers are paying the big bucks, and if you're about to be one of them, then man oh man, take someone special with you the first time you drive your new EQE in the dark, because I'm telling you, it is out of this world. These are the Mercedes Digital Lights, inside of each are three extremely powerful LEDs, whose output is precisely controlled by a thumbnail-sized array of micro-mirror pixels. Each lamp has 1.3 million. Each can be turned on and off at will. The micro-mirror pixels are controlled by an HDMI-like video feed, so basically these headlights are actually more like video projectors. They can even do a little pre-drive warm-up animation, and drivers can even download their own custom animations, including seasonal ones for the holidays. But more importantly, those projectors, which are literally projectors, unlock special powers like the ability to check mapping and elevation data based on GPS, and optimize the forward lighting to take hills and valleys into account or aiming a spotlight at pedestrians detected along the roadside so they're easier for you to see. The only pedestrians I usually encounter at night in this part of Canada are of the four-legged variety, and while many of the more advanced functionalities of this lighting system are neutered for the North American market and its outdated headlight laws, the version of Mercedes Digital Light that we do get on this side of the pond remains one of the most powerful and engaging lighting systems I've ever tried. It's quite a sight to watch the system respond to its surroundings, and virtually animate the scenery ahead of you as it adjusts its beam pattern and shape to the current elevation and driving environment. More on that a little later in the video, but let's start by taking a look at where you get to enjoy this all from. So let me take you through the driving environment in here and show you a few of the things that I found the most interesting. So first, head-up display here projecting just over the edge of the hood. We can control uh, the output of that display just by using a few buttons here on the steering wheel. So we go to the home menu and then we scroll up one notch uh, to this row of controls up here and then back and forth. And that lets us add additional information to the heads up display if we like. So there's the off-road display, there's the eco display, uh, speed limit sign warning, sport display here and just a minimal layout there if you like. Hyper screen, there's my hand for reference. Just a huge, huge screen. And another one over here on the passenger side. And a third screen right here is uh, the instrument cluster. Of course, this comes in a couple of different themes that you can choose from as well. There's a sport configuration if we like, understated and classic, which tends to be my favorite. They refer to this as zero layer, which means that there are zero layers of menus for the driver to go through in order to get to the function that they're probably looking for. So you can see we've got the map on screen here, the EQ menu up here, that brings us to some common functions in terms of charging and finding stations nearby and so on. We've got the Android Auto right up here above that if we like. 
just clicks and there's our Android Auto there. Always we can just go back uh, to the main screen by pressing the home button here. So display widget here uh, for our music, another one for our phone. It chose to put the trunk release button here on the screen because it finds I'm using that fairly often. So this just gives me an option uh, to press it there, make life a little bit easier. Climate control functions down here, and check this out. When you adjust the temperature down, you can see it sending uh, those blue sort of waves through the LED lighting over there on the passenger side. And when I turn it up, you can see it sending those orange or red colored waves. Of course, we can also fully customize the ambient interior lighting. We go into comfort and ambient light here. And there's a whole menu of different colors and themes and animations that we can choose from, as well as the brightness. And again, if we're a little bit lost here, just back to the home button there, uh, right back to the main screen. So welcome to the EQE at nighttime. We've got the hyper screen, so I have displays from one side of the dash to the other, set behind this giant Gorilla Glass blade, and really it just looks like a spaceship in here. The ambient lighting can do any color combination you can think of, animate, change slowly or quickly, and in the dark, you've just got this glossy, vivid, calming, relaxing place to sit back and unwind and enjoy the drive. There are a lot of cars I haven't driven, but of the thousand or more that I have, I've never seen a cabin that looks so purely stunning after dark. Sure, you can get ambient color change lighting on a $40,000 Kia, but the difference here is the way they've used every bit of it to show off some of the interior's styling touches, and bring out additional beauty and shapes and textures in the materials, and sculpting, that you don't notice as much in the daytime. It really is like having an entirely different machine at night, depending on how you're setting up the lighting via the central display, or even voice command if you like. Most of the dashboard in here is a glossy screen. After dark, you'll appreciate the clean and sharp graphics, with remarkably minimized light leakage from unlit pixels, and a really vivid display that doesn't get hazy or make your eyes strain to read anything, even when at full brightness. Switch the central and passenger side screens off if you like, and set the instruments to a minimal display if you want to keep your attention glued to the road ahead, and minimize light pollution from your forward dash or light things up with a more dynamic looking display mode and turn up the volume on the color changing interior LEDs to give yourself a high tech futuristic looking after dark cockpit where you're comfortable, relaxed, and literally surrounded by beautiful ribbons of colorful light. By the way, you might have noticed these flashing purple lights in the instrument cluster. These are infrared lights that help monitor the driver. Though my camera picks them up, they're not visible to the naked eye. Elsewhere in the After Dark Drive, the responsive touch screen and zero-layer interface means that virtually any function you're likely to be using at any specific situation is on screen with its own button. No need to dig through multiple layers and menus. I can control audio, navigation, climate, and media from the home screen without ever leaving it and the responses from the system are fast, consistent, and predictable. That means less time with your eyes away from the road. After a few days, this infotainment system had even learned locations where I commonly open the trunk, and displayed a trunk release on the touchscreen for me when I parked there. Very clever. The point is, everything you need is either on the screen or just a single button press away, which does make life that little bit more easy going when you're cruising after hours. It doesn't need to be dark for this interior to shine, of course. The LED lights are powerful enough that on maximum brightness they can still play a major role in the cabin's look, even when it's sunny or overcast too. That means you can enjoy it more of the time, and that's more value for your dollars. And then, up ahead, the headlights. You'll notice a stable and consistent beam pattern in front of you, even as the car bounces over bumps or climbs and descends hills. Movement of the shape and angle of the lighting output on the road ahead stays more consistent here than I was expecting, thanks to the system's ability to self-optimize on the fly. Even at dusk and in overcast conditions, the low beams do an excellent job of making distant reflective surfaces pop, and in the dark that's even more impressive, and a key asset of this lighting system. Especially with those brights on, you've got a generous amount of warning if something or someone crosses in front of a reflector up the road on empty highways with no light sources other than you, you will really appreciate the power and reach of these lights. Automatic high beams are generally on the ball, and the switch between low and high is smooth and slightly animated rather than abrupt. The high beams come and go with an effect like a curtain of light opening and closing up the road. That's more engaging to look at and has a way of keeping your eyes focused up and away where they belong. 
To me, this is another secret talent of this lighting system. Because the lighting output of this system is dynamic, it has a way of captivating the driver's attention and making it more engaging to keep your vision focused far up the road. The light is white and very bright in the immediate foreground and roadside, and stronger than I expected into tree lines and culverts. For reference, as I drive through these rock cuts, I usually expect to see light less than halfway to the top, and with much less light available. With the EQE, those same rock faces are brightly lit, top to bottom. The edge of the beam pattern on the road reveals small dark notches that give away the positioning of the light's pattern, as the micropixels behind bend light to better match the road's surface too. So that's a look at one of the most high-performing lighting systems I've ever tested, from one of the most beautiful after-dark cabins I've ever tested a lighting system from. And while the high price to entry means that this will likely be a feature relegated to big dollar cars for now, you can bet technologies like this will eventually trickle down from flagship level pricing into the sorts of cars and trucks that you and I can afford. Mm -hmm.